Hello everyone and have you ever looked at those very cool hacking gadgets over at Hack5? Like for example this rubber ducky that is used for injecting keystrokes. The short jack that is being used for network analysis. And this Wi-Fi pineapple that is being used for wireless attacks. Now, they are so awesome, right? But let's be honest. As awesome as they are, they are also a little bit pricey. So, what if I told you that there's this tiny little device that can do all of that and a whole lot more for just around $12? And I'm talking about this guy, the LilyGo T-Dongle S3. Now, I am currently at the repository of the USP Army Knife. I'll be sharing the link down below. And one of the more important things that you need to know if you want to create your very own scripts that can be run on this T dongle is the list of commands which you can see under wiki. So the list of commands for here is just review. Um, there's the display UI and as you can see there is a screen on the T dongle the device hardware which shows the Wi-Fi the web dashboard things that you can do with it USB common USB functionality there is also an agent that you can install into the laptop of someone so that anything that is or any attack that you're about to do with this, it will not go through the network, but through the Wi-Fi of it. That is very, very exciting. I will not be showing it to you today, but I will be showing to you how to do that on a future video. Now, there's also file handling, which you can do because you can write, since this has an SD card in it, you can write files in it, okay? There are some others, this one like Calc and SP32M. This is the one thing that I am really, really excited. But first, it has an updated Daki script 3 commands, uh, meaning that there are now logical operations that you can do. Unlike the WHID Wi-Fi cactus that can only execute basic Daki script. And more importantly, the ESP32 Marauder command. So if you are familiar, for example, um, you have the Wi-Fi module of Flipper Zero. These are the same. So any functionality of the Flipper Zero with the Wi-Fi module, you can do it here. Okay, so the next thing that I'll be showing to you are the examples that we will be doing today. The first one would be the Rickroll. Now, it is important to know that, let's go to Rickroll, and as you can see, the file is autorun.ds. Autorun.ds or autorun.ds means that that is the script that your USB will be executing once you plug it in. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can rename the script into something that is very descriptive to you, but keep the file extension as .ts because the, those are the files that the web interface, which I will be showing it to you, um, will show. And those are the files that you can execute remotely. So for example, on this recrawl, um, Later, I will be showing it to you as a remote execution rather than when you plug it in. Okay, so let's go and click auto run DS. Let's just try to analyze what is in this script. And as you can see, this one, um, GUI, and it is typing this, which is the YouTube channel or the YouTube video. And now this is the ESP32 Marauder attack. As you can see, this is the troll attack, the recrawl one. Uh, 
what happens is on your Wi-Fi, you can see a lyrics of the, what you call it, never gonna give you up, a chorus on, on your list of Wi-Fi access point. Now, this one just, um, what you call it? This one, because your USB has a LCD in it. This is three images that acts like an animated GIF of Rick Astley is the name that I'm trying to remember. Rick Astley dancing. So you'll see Rick Astley dancing here. I'll be showing that to you also later. Okay. Now we have all of the scripts saved in the SD card and let's put it on the T-Dungle S3. Okay, now once plugged in, we can check the list of Wi-Fi access points that we have and as you can see there is iPhone 14, that is the default Wi-Fi access point of the USB army knife and the password is password and you can go to 4.3.2.1.880 and that is the web interface okay and what we can do is under run script there is the three scripts that I have and let's run rick roll and as you can see it is trying to run Now, the next one that I will be showing to you is the USB Ethernet keycap. Okay, so this one, what happens is that there's a setting that you can set on the web interface also that the, this will, instead of acting as a keyboard, it will be acting as a USB network interface. Now, once it does that, it you can run the command to capture network traffic that is being sent here into a pickup file. So take a, let's take a look at that. This is the script. As you can see, it does check and with the if, does check if the setting is an ethernet device or a network interface. And after doing that, this is the command to capture the network traffic. After 10 seconds, whatever network traffic has been captured, it will turn off. We'll try to save all of that into a pickup, pickup file. And that's the one that we'll be checking later. Okay, now the next attack that I'll be showing or demonstrating is the pickup ca capture. And as you can see here, in order for it to work, let's go to settings. And you need to change the device type. Okay, so custom value, change it to NCM, which is what we need for the pickup capture attack. Okay, now after we have changed it to that, Let's see, because it disconnected. Okay, we'll just reconnect again. Let's double check if we have changed the device type. Okay, so it's NCM already. Check it once again. Okay, now that we have that, what we can do is let's select the script pickup that the S, which contains the script that I've shown you earlier and click execute okay at the back what you will see is there starting pickup now once it's finished like I said pick up stop and you can check inside and there will be a pickup file inside the sd card unfortunately the pickup file you cannot see in the file browser but if you check the sd card it will be there 
Now, the next thing I would like to show to you is the Evil Access Point where our devices, okay, has this certain trust if it has already connected to a certain access point. And the main problem with that one is that you just, you can just create an access point with the same name and our device will try to connect to it. So for example, here in the Philippines, there is this Starbuck Wi-Fi, um, Glove Wi-Fi, Free Wi-Fi, or SM Free Wi-Fi. You can have all of those types of access points and your phone will try to connect to it if you have access those public Wi-Fi initially. Now, what the evil access point does is that when you try to connect to those to to the wi-fi that is being published by this it will show you a login page you will think that this for example a login page for google or apple that you need to do and once you put your username and password in there it will be saved in a text file in this usb so let's just check out so you have this html and you have this command the esp32 marauder command where this one will be publishing an access point called apple free wi-fi and when you click on that one it will show the apple that html and when someone puts in the what you call it username password and that one it will be saved in a text file in the sd card of that so let's just try it out now the last attack i will be demonstrating is the evil access point now what evil access point does is that let's click here and click execute and on the list of wi-fi access point you're gonna see apple free wi-fi and when you click it you will be redirected to a screen where you want to put your email and at and password Okay, so after that, put in your email and password, nothing will happen. But what will happen is there's a file inside your file browser or in the SD card that had save the username and password that you have put in here. The dongle S3 really shows you how accessible hardware hacking has become. It's really, really exciting to see such a powerful tool available in such an affordable price. And if you want to keep learning about this kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Till next time, my fellow Hakista.